for instance, the city has a goal to create 100,000 units of housing by about the year 2021. And that's great, 100,000 units, fantastic. We need it, say all the experts, but it's simply not enough. So it's a partial remedy and we look like we're gonna be there. We're kind of on course to making that goal, but the people I talk to say, you know, we gotta start at talking about 200,000, 300,000 units of housing. So how do we build that while also maintaining the things that we love about Los Angeles, right? We don't wanna become like Hong Kong or Shanghai, or at least a lot of people don't. So how do we keep, how do we keep the Los Angelesness of LA while growing in, in the way that we need to? So when I first got out here, you know, I think that the no, biggest known designer out here was April Griman. You know, and her work was very distinctive. She was using the computer in new ways. Um, you know, Apple was there. You know, there was there was a very particular kind of branding. You know, of course, that was up there in San Francisco. But um, I just, you know, I didn't have a whole sense of it other than April Griman and what she was doing. But you know, from it was. To me, California was completely invisible. California was invisible from the East Coast. California design, except for, you know, we, we have to mention the 80s and everything that happened in the 80s here, California New Wave, which of course, April was part of that. But, you know, from the perspective of the East Coast, this was the backwater. This is no man's land where nothing was happened. So it's exciting, especially like now to be here and be at an event like this and see the recognition that design is getting here and see the vibrancy that you can see just in the people here. Doing sort of the same things, it's just they've adapted to sort of all the changes that have been happening around them. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a lot of people now in Detroit from other places, for example, a lot of people from Brooklyn, you know, have moved to Detroit. Um, I guess maybe a, a few people from Los Angeles. It's just, it's kind of almost become, I guess that's where a little bit of where LA and Detroit are starting to become real similar, where you know LA has always been known as a city um, for transplants and now Detroit is now attracting a lot of the creative community from around the country. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Did you ever think when you were growing up in Detroit that one day Detroit would actually be a destination where people were moving into? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. No, no, even when I left, I think, um, when I moved to Chicago, it was about 2007 or 2006. I can't quite remember. But even at that point, you know, things weren't really happening. There were there were um, things that we would go to and attend, but it was there were there were events and sort of just things that we were always doing and going to in Detroit. But it wasn't any like Detroit wasn't in the spotlight. I would I guess I would say. I think I can't imagine any other place in the U.S. that is as exciting as uh, Los Angeles is. Now, having said that, I also th I'm very happy to be working in Detroit as well. Uh, for different reasons. I think Detroit probably, I was just talking to Lorcan about this, and he was saying that Detroit probably represents this kind of new tabula rasa, like LA was perhaps uh, many years ago. So it's a different kind of opportunities. And you could imagine doing all kinds of things in Detroit that uh, perhaps in New York or any other places is not possible. I think Detroit is a little bit like uh, at its sort of maybe adolescent phase. So it has a lot of things, it's growing. And it's full of optimism and you could imagine there's a kind of vision that you could do a lot of things there. I think LA, what, what I was talking about earlier that is exciting is that it's finally matured. 